But Christianity's record in this, as I don't need to remind you, is, is a bit uneven. And it's something to do with the fact that quite early on, Christianity did internalize some very negative attitudes to bodies as such, and therefore to bodily functions like sex. The overvaluation of reason or intellect in some people's writing and thinking in the early church meant that sexuality was a deeply problematic area. You never quite knew what was going to happen. And St. Augustine has um, an extraordinarily candid discussion of why this is difficult. You never know, forgive me being uh, basic, you never know when you're going to get an erection, says St. Augustine. Now, your will doesn't manage this side of your experience. He's talking about men, of course. That's, again, no surprise in the era. You never know what's going to happen. You never know quite where your body's going to come round and surprise you. And that means that this is a dangerous area. And therefore, you need to treat it with enormous caution. And that feeds into a general Western Christian unease about all this, an unease about body, passion, loss of control. You could say the very the very area of self-surrender, which St. Paul sees as positively significant, becomes in later writers an area of danger. Self-surrender, letting go, is what you mustn't do. Hi, I'm uh, Anna Dominey from Lady Margaret School in West London, um, and I've got a general question, which is um, how does one become moved by God, and how does one uh, learn to love God? Wow. Right. Archbishop. <laughs> <laughs> how long have we got? It's a pretty fundamental question, isn't it? I think most people are first stirred to want to know God or to love God by looking at the lives of other people who seem to show that it's worthwhile. Um, to use an extremely irreverent analogy, you, some of you at least will have seen the film When Harry Met Sally and will remember the famous restaurant scene in that um, where somebody says, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> I remember many, many years ago seeing um, a rather radical and adventurous Roman Catholic priest giving a talk about sex to teenagers. And he came on the stage with a large L plate around his neck. <laughs> What's happening is you are opening into your own depths. And that means there are two different ways of sounding stupid. If you're a, a cleric, especially an archbishop, talking in the media, and I'm afraid I've become very familiar with both of them. Stupid or something. Mama says stupid is as stupid goes. <laughs> <laughs>